If you are afraid Actually, to fly... Actually, be the person whose hands hold your life. That's what I said. Something like, like that. that. If you're afraid to fly, perhaps this will help you like it helped me. Build up your arm muscles. That is another option. Here, this might also help you. Do you think that you can escape God? Is there any place you can go, ask the psalmist, where God is not? Do you think that by not flying... You're John Madden, and you think you do you think that by taking a bus, if God wants to kill you that day, because don't forget, God kills everybody. God does not just, oh, it looks like maybe God killed that really bad. No, how do you think people die? God sustains life. If he's taking away that sustaining power, he's the one responsible for our death. In fact, hold on one minute. Um, was reading a book called My God is True. Not done with it yet, so once again, this is not... I repeat, this is not an endorsement, but who needs one when you got one from Sinclair Ferguson and Alistair Begg? This was a book about a young man at the age of 28, was diagnosed with cancer, studying at Westminster Theological Seminary, hadn't even been married a year, had tremendous back pain, and then suddenly his legs didn't work. Went in, MRI, tumor! How's that? How's that for big fun? And now he's written a book 10 years later called My God is True, Lessons Learned Along Cancer's Dark Road. And he put together on pages 14 and 15, if you are keeping track with your copy, some verses. Listen to these verses. If you're afraid of flying and you think that taking a bus will keep you from death. (laughs) Really? Then the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Exodus 4.11, Rexella. This from Deuteronomy 32.39. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God beside me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Sure isn't. First Samuel 2, 6 through 7. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down Shaol and raise, to Shaol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. Who's responsible for people dying? God. Who's responsible for, I don't know, say everything? God. Consider the work of God who can make straight what he has made crooked. In the day of prosperity, be joyful. And in the day of adversity, consider. God has made the one as well as the other, so that man may not find out anything that will be after him. Ecclesiastes 7, 13 through 14. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. And if you are in Christ, you can therefore take comfort in knowing he is doing them all for my good. If you're outside of Jesus Christ, whoo! Hit it a fool. You are in you're you could be getting it. God could be pouring his wrath out on you right now. How's about is a trumpet blown in the city and the people are not afraid? Does disaster come to a city unless the Lord has done it? Who has spoken and it came to pass unless the Lord has commanded it? It is not out of the mouth of the most high that good and bad come on and on. Don't forget Acts 2 and 4, his prearranged plan. He organizes everything. James 4, 13 through 17. Proverbs 16, 9. The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. If you're interested, those of you who are into the Heidelberg Catechism of 1563, question 27. What do you understand by the providence of God? Answer. God's providence is his almighty and ever-present power, whereby, as with his hand, he still upholds heaven and earth and all creatures, and so governs them that leaf and blade, rain and drought, fruitful and barren years, food and drink, health and sickness, riches and poverty, indeed, all things come not by chance, but by his fatherly hand. That should be comforting to anybody who has cancer or who doesn't have cancer.